So have you ever noticed in the first couple chapters of Luke's Gospel, as he records what happens with the coming of Jesus into the world, that there's like, there's like all of this singing. You have Mary exploding in song, my soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have Zechariah just gushing forth from the center of his soul, blessed be the God of Israel. You have Simeon saying, Sovereign Lord, as you've promised, you can now dismiss your servant. In peace, the angels are singing glory to God in the highest peace to man on earth. There's like all of this singing. Luke's gospel is like history meets a West Side story or something crazy like that. And it seems pretty obvious to me that when God comes near, people sing. Hundreds of years before Jesus arrived, the people of God went through this massive devastation taken away from their land, their temple, everything that was familiar with them. They found themselves in this incredibly horrible and strange place. And the psalmist records what the experience was like for them, saying in Psalm 137, that by, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and we wept when we remembered Zion. For there our tormentors came to us and they demanded of us songs of joy. They said, sing to us one of the songs of Zion. And he says, how could we ever sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? God has abandoned us. He's left us. What is there left to sing about? They totally lost their song. And yet just a few decades later, we get the prophet Isaiah saying to the people of God, sing, sing, O barren woman. You who never bore a child, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who's had a husband. By the end of this devastating experience, somehow the people of God had found their song, which I think begs the question, why? See, for most of us, when we go through something devastating, the immediate visceral reaction is, God's left us, he's departed from us, he's gone. We have nothing left to do with him, and what is there left to sing about? And yet somehow, some way, I think what happened to the people of God in exile is that they found their way into this promise that was embedded deep in the soul of Israel's life. The promise being, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. See, the lie that most of us are tempted to believe is that somewhere, some way, God has become absent to us and that at certain moments of our lives, He appears. But the truth of the matter is that when Jesus bursts onto the scene in the first century, it's not as though God were absent and then all of a sudden he were present. But now what's happened is that God has made his presence known in a new and peculiar way, which is why these people erupt in song. See, I think the central task of Advent is not to say, God, come here when you're not present, but to say, God, you are already here, and to find a way to erupt with song in our own lives. So where are those places for you? Think about those places in your life where God seems absent, where he seems distant, where it seems like you've been hauled off into Babylon and how can we sing the songs of the Lord? And maybe the central task for you is to try to figure out, to find your way into that central promise of the gospel. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And from that place, begin to join your song with the song of Mary, the song of Zechariah, the song of the angels, the song of Simeon. The song that at the very center of it is a cry, Emmanuel, God with us forever.